So I believe that there are only two ages. There is the present age that we talk so much about, which we are in now, which Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 says is the present evil age, okay? And then there is only an age to come, right? Which that, when, when it speaks of those categories, present and age to come, uh, age to come is speaking about the heavenly state. And so there, uh, these two ages, therefore, uh, eliminate this idea of a kind of a, of a partial age, okay? That I believe... Uh, that I believe both premillennialism and postmillennialism commit the error of believing in a third category of a partially renewed age and, a, and still a partial present evil age. Um, and so I, I think that's the scheme that you have with pre and postmillennialism. Now you take this whole chart and you put it in different places. If you're premillennialist, you put this chart in the future after Jesus returns. If you're post-millennialist, you take this chart and you put it here in the present before Jesus returns. You see, either way you slice it, you still come up with this third age in the middle and what happens there? There's a blending. Can you believe I did that? There's a bl- I got that blending technique and everything, Matt. Come on now, thank you for the applause. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? There is a mixture of, bro- of both the present evil age and a mixture of the age to come. And so a premillennialist will say, well, of course, because in the millennium, it will be better. I mean, we're going to be uh, in our glorified bodies. Uh, Jesus is going to be in Jerusalem reigning from the temple. Of course, it's a better age. But you still have this thorny theological problem that in that millennial scheme, you have sinful people walking around still, you're still heading towards an end time war, cataclysmic war that Revelation 20 identifies as Gog and Magog, and so it's not much of a great age to come because you still have sin. I would say in some ways it's worse. Can you think about it, I mean, think about it right now. When you sin, it should grieve your heart, correct? It should grieve us to know man, we sin and we disappointed God and we were displeasing to God and we violated his law and, and, and how can I do that, right? And da- David said, against you, O Lord, and only you have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, right? Uh, now, can you imagine that we do that now in the sense that Jesus is here with us only spiritually and invisibly? Now, can you imagine sin if Jesus were physically, visibly on the earth and people are yet sinning in his presence. It's just, uh, this is what Louis Burkhoff calls the absurdities of the millennium because it gets to a point where here's Jesus in all his glorious power from the throne, right? Uh, And if you take the depictions of what you see in Revelation, eyes are a flame of fire, hair is like wool, sword proceeds out of his mouth. He is He's come in all of his omnipotent power to, to, to judge the world. And premillennialists, premillennialists want us to believe that right around the corner, I guess somewhere on the earth, around the corner, down the street, uh, there are people sinning against God, right? <laughs> right in the presence of this glorified Christ, which to me, you know, uh, you know that, that, that seems like an impossibility. Uh, and then postmillennialism, you know, would venture into a different category. Let me just finish this, and I'll get to your questions real quick. But uh, you know, post-millennial, postmillennialism would say that we are in the, the age to come now. We're in the millennium now here on this earth, and that this earth, uh, this age, is going to slowly transform into more of what is going to be the age to come. And so, slowly but surely, things like um, Sin will be reduced, righteousness will be escalated, the nations will be converted, uh, the law of God will take dominion over all the governments of the planet, okay? And this is before Jesus returns. And so, again, what they're saying is that at some point, we don't know maybe for how long, but there will be a duration of church history where we're kind of no longer in the present evil age, but we're more in the age to come um, some post-millennialists 
uh, even talk about a, 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 a literal transformation of, the, of nature, right, where um, uh, we will live longer, um, animals will not be hostile to us. We'll kind of kind of go back to almost an Edenic time, okay? And that's because righteousness has increased. The law of God has taken over. And as righteousness increases, well, then so should the blessings of God in our lives by way of longevity and peace and righteousness and uh, hostility in the created order. The creation itself will be somewhat more subdued. So again, I think... Uh, uh, postmillennialism, though it's better than premillennialism in several instances, still com- commits the same fallacy of, of, of this intermingled age. So let me just say a word here about, uh, nope, that's a different slide. Let me just say a word here about realized eschatology because this is, uh, so for premillennialism, they would deny realized eschatology. Uh, a true premillennialist would tell you the kingdom of God is not here right now. Uh, the kingdom of God is, is strictly reserved for the millennium in the future, after Jesus returns. A postmillennialism would believe in what I would call overrealized eschatology, where they would say that the kingdom of God is here now, but not just redemptively and spiritually, but they, they would go to the, to the extent, I believe, that the kingdom of God here is in a geophysical fashion as well. And so that, that's where I believe that realized eschatology is very important to understand. And the way that I would phrase it is this. When it comes to realized eschatology, that eschatology is rooted in your union with Christ. It resides in union with Christ. And here's, here's the point of realized eschatology. Ready? You have as much realized eschatology at the instant of conversion that you will ever have throughout your entire Christian life and that there, were e- that there will ever be throughout the entire present age. There will not be more of realized eschatology than you have right now. And so that's really important to understand because then you begin to see realized eschatology as an intensifying reality that the further and further we go into time and history, the greater and greater and greater realized eschatology we should expect. But we know that that's not the case even in our own lives because Monday through Sunday, is that the whole week, (laughs) right? Uh, We understand we're still in the battle with the flesh, the world, and the devil. So we're still in this sanctification. And where is that taught explicitly? Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight is preparing you and preparing me that we live in the tension of this age and the age to come. We do, not unbelievers. Unbelievers do not live in the tension of the age to come. Only the believer is caught in this tension. What what does Paul say in Philippians chapter three? We are citizens of this world, absolutely, but our true citizenship is where? In heaven. 